All right, so uh, I just want to welcome everybody officially before I introduce Mike from the Michigan Lean Consortium. Um, today I'm going to be presenting some techniques for facilitating virtual Kaizen events. And since the pandemic, this has obviously been a hot topic. There have been several requests about this, and the crazy thing is that uh, not a lot of us have best practices in this area, right? None of us are really experts in facilitating virtual Kaizen events because this has never really been a necessity like it is today. Um, we, we're going to take this learning path together, and uh, I do want to preface this webinar by saying that uh, virtual Kaizen events are not ideal, right? The ideal Kaizen event is a face-to-face -face at the Gemba, right? However, in this ever-changing world with most companies being global and situations like we find ourselves in now, uh, considering this global pandemic, we can't just put Kaizen on hold. Right? We can't hit the pause button on continuous improvement. So we need to be willing to be flexible and, uh, and adjust accordingly. However, before I dive in, uh, you guys all heard Mike jump in here. Uh, we, we, I want to thank everyone who has donated to this particular webinar. We had uh, quite a few donations come through, and I want to thank all of you for the support for this particular webinar. 50% um, of all donations are going to go back to the Michigan Lean Consortium um, and so that they can continue to do events like this and other events to continue to support uh, people, uh, organizations, companies that are on their CI journey. So with that said, let me go ahead and, and uh, turn this over to, to Mike uh, with the Mi Michigan Lean Consortium. All right, Mike, are you there? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. You bet. I appreciate it, Patrick. Uh, so, yeah, grateful for everyone's attendance today, for everyone uh, joining and supporting uh, Patrick and the Michigan Link Consortium. Uh, just to quick introduce myself, I've, I've been a member of the Michigan Link Consortium for over a decade. I've uh, been a board of director for the last two years as vice chair. And uh, as with most organizations right now with the pandemic and the COVID situation, we're trying to reinvent and try to create these meaningful uh, opportunities where we can still network uh, to grow and learn um, and share a lot of our best practices. So uh, we're very grateful for your attendance. It wouldn't happen without you. We're very grateful for uh, uh, Patrick and his willingness to put this on. And if uh, you are interested in joining and you're not a member of Michigan Lean Consortium, uh, you'll find us at michiganlean.org. Uh, a lot about us uh, and ways to get involved. Uh, we have a lot of uh, now virtual opportunities to join us, uh, and we do a lot of uh, events. Uh, usually our capstone is our annual event, uh, which is typically in August, uh, but we're changing a little bit about how we're going to do those events uh, with the situation. So I encourage you to stay abreast of, of what the Michigan Link Consortium is doing uh, as we try to transform our organizations and economy together uh, using Lean Systems uh, thinking. So. Appreciate this opportunity to, to introduce Patrick. Always interested in share uh, great thought leadership, and uh, uh, really excited about today's presentation. So thank you very much, Patrick. All right, absolutely. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it uh, very much. Love being a, a, a in partnership with the Michigan Lean Consortium. Obviously, I love all the work that you guys are doing, and and just appreciate that very much. Uh, there's a lot of words here, so I'm not going to I'm not going to read this to you, but just a little bit about myself. Uh, after being medically retired from the United States Marine Corps, I landed a job as a production supervisor, and I fell in love with operations and lean manufacturing. Uh, since then, I've been helping to deploy lean methodology in many different industries at many different size organizations. Uh, and after 20 years of working in operations management and lean, I started a consulting company to help companies improve their processes during using continuous improvement principles. Uh, during my journey, I've worked with many different companies and leadership, uh, but two companies actually stand out the most, and one that had an amazing culture of continuous improvement, and then another that liked to put on a show, post value stream maps, talk the talk, but didn't necessarily walk the walk. And underneath all of the pretty scorecards and the lean posters, was a toxic culture that where people really hated to work. And I'm actually going to be publishing a book uh, later this fall that will talk a lot about these two companies and present a model to help people determine what's really hiding underneath their culture. So look for that this fall. 
All right, with that, let's dive into today's material. So I will be uh, presenting a couple different areas uh, for you today. If any of you does have a question uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the webinar, please feel free to use the chat box and let me know on the chat box. Uh, I'll try to get to those questions uh, probably towards the end, or if there's a question that's very specific to one of the slides, I'll try to hit on it at that point. Uh, I apologize if I don't get to all of the questions, uh, but I'll do my best. Okay, so today I'm going to be giving you a high-level view of Kaizen events in general. I'll follow that with some virtual event do's and don'ts, and then follow that with examples of virtual versus in-person facilitation of a Kaizen event. I'm going to share with you some of my favorite engagement activities, tools, and techniques, as well as some great software applications to enhance your visual experience. And then we're going to finish off the hour by working through a simple simulation uh, where you can all use one of my most favorite virtual engagement websites, uh, Mentimeter or Menti.com. All right, so we're going to do that. All right, so let's dive in. And there we go. All right, so what is a Kaizen event? Uh, there are some people that are on this, this particular uh, webinar that probably are new to continuous improvement or new to Kaizen events. So I want to make sure that I uh, give everyone on the webinar today a high-level view of what a Kaizen is, right? So bear with me for a moment while I just give this general explanation. Kaizen is a Japanese word made up of two distinct characters. They mean small changes for the better, or in other words, continuous improvement. A Kaizen event specifically is a focused team activity with specific and aggressive breakthrough objectives aimed at solving a well-defined problem. Uh, as a team member on a Kaizen team, you could expect to accomplish a huge amount of results in a very short amount of time. Usually Kaizen events will go from two, anywhere from two to five days. A Kaizen event should never be a standalone activity for promoting a lean culture. Uh, there are organizations out there that feel like we just need to do Kaizen events and then we can consider ourselves lean. There's a lot more to it than that, uh, but, but be sure that you understand that, that Kaizen events uh, really go run in parallel with many other activities that help promote a, uh, a, a Kaizen culture or a continuous improvement culture. Uh, really driven by an engaged and supportive leadership team is probably one of the most important keys. Um, I'm going to be showing you an example of a Kaizen event agenda here shortly. And uh, uh, then we'll kind of go through it in a little bit more detail as far as what a, a Kaizen event looks like. But before that, I do want to discuss some important facilitation techniques for lean practitioners who will be leading virtual Kaizen events. And one, one other thing before we talk about the do's and don'ts, as I mentioned earlier, uh, virtual Kaizen events are fairly new, right? So don't wait until you have perfected your virtual Kaizen craft to actually lead one because it's never going to be perfect, right? Just start and then learn as you go. The worst thing that can happen is, is if you get stuck at home and you decide to put your CI work on hold just because you don't feel comfortable in front of a camera, right? That's the worst thing that can happen. So you need to continue with your continuous improvement journey um, and, and adjust accordingly as you go. Um, your team is really going to appreciate the opportunity to learn alongside you. So you know, my, my recommendation is to just get out there and just do it. Um, and then learn and adjust as you go, PDCA, right? Um, so that's, that's my intro into a, uh, a Kaizen event. Um, just like an, an in-person Kaizen event, all virtual Kaizen events uh, should begin with some agreed upon rules and expectations. Now, we, we uh, use Zoom for our virtual events. You can also use GoToMeeting, uh, Skype, or other web conference programs. However, I'm sure by now most of you are familiar with Zoom, so uh, we're going we're gonna to show you some different things with Zoom that, that can be very effective. Um, and you may not know it really that well or well enough to take advantage of all of its benefits. So, you know, uh, this, this, hopefully this webinar will help you with some of that. Um, in an in-person Kaizen event, usually one of the rules that we hear is that uh, only one person talks at a time. Well, on Zoom, that's a pretty easy rule to support because the facilitator has the ability to mute everyone, right? Uh, so, I mean, can you imagine being able to do that in an in-person event when the team is talking over each other, right? Just start hitting mute on everybody. Well, you can actually do that in a virtual Kaizen. So it's, it's actually one of those benefits of, of the virtual Kaizen. 
Uh, but if the other thing too is uh, everyone is muted right now. There's a question in there. What I want you to do is find your um, hand raise button, right? This is another maybe rule that you can use. If someone wants to talk, uh, then you can use the hand raise button. Again, these are maybe some general rules for Zoom, but if you're new to Zoom, you do have that hand raise button, so you can use that to, uh, if someone wants to say something, then obviously the facilitator has the ability to uh, unmute them if, if, that, if, if you decide to. Uh, we're, we, all, we all know that sometimes people can also get distracted working on other stuff while attending a meeting, attending a virtual meeting. So uh, if you enforce that everyone keeps their video on, uh, and then introduce interactive activities throughout the Kaizen event, uh, which we'll talk about shortly, then people have a tendency to stay engaged, right? So uh, at, you can also ask your virtual Kaizen team, which I do with in-person Kaizen events as well, but you can ask your virtual team for other rules or expectations that are maybe important to them. Um, a good way to, to track those is using your whiteboard on Zoom, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. Uh, but you'll really be surprised how helpful it is to engage your team in this way. Okay, so here's the whiteboard uh, feature in Zoom. Um, so using your whiteboard function is a good way to collect and display your event rules. Um, looks like I had a, a question come in here uh, around respect for people and muting people. Uh, more, Steve, just a quick side note, that was just, I was just kidding around about whether you want to or not. I absolutely uh, support the fact of respecting people, uh, but the mute function is obviously good to keep people from uh, working over each other uh, or talking over each other and obviously giving everybody their opportunity. So thank you for making that point. Appreciate that. Uh, I always start my virtual Kaizen events off with an icebreaker that not only gets the entire team engaged, but it also ensures that they know how to use uh, all the tools, right, during and, and you know, even after the event or even before in, in pre-planning. So not everybody's comfortable using Google Docs or Mentimeter or WhatsApp or Microsoft Teams, right? So what I do is I actually build my icebreakers that around the event that force the participants to open a shared document add some information, save it, right? And then we open it as a group. Um, and so then this way uh, you can, you know, learn how to use the tools before you get into the actual uh, Kaizen event itself. Uh, we also use fun word cloud activities to introduce them to Mentimeter, which you're gonna see uh, an example of that here in just a minute. Uh, another important do is to make sure that you have proper setup as a facilitator. So uh, let me show you what I mean before we look at some of those interactive activities, right? So when facilitating a virtual event, you have to consider your setup, uh, especially as the facilitator, but obviously, you know, making sure that your team members understand this is important as well. Um, you, you could be sitting at a computer for anywhere from five, six to up to eight hours. So you need to consider comfort. Be sure that the computer screen uh, and your sitting area is ergonomically correct. And then you also wanna be professional and ensure that your participants can see your facial expressions. So lighting is important, right? You can consider investing in some soft lights uh, for the, uh, the area around your presentation area. Uh, and then even consider investing maybe in uh, a good webcam. Um, I'm actually using the webcam on my laptop right now, but you know, this is a, a, a Logitech webcam that, again, they're not very expensive and they can definitely enhance the view that your participants are gonna have um, when they're logging in to, and watching one of these or being part of a virtual Kaizen event. Um, so I would suggest investing in a good webcam, a good mic. Um, another thing to point out is windows. Natural light is important, but be careful about having a window behind you because it brings a glare to the screen and then it makes it hard for people to see. Okay, so those are just some simple setup logistics. Um, and now that we have those out of the way, it's time to ensure that you have done the proper pre-planning for your event. All right, so let's go into pre-plan here. So your prep work is super important, both for an in-person as well as a virtual event. Uh, it's, it's important for the success of either, right? So I personally use a short form, which is a kind of event charter to ensure that we are completely ready for the event. Now, some of the items on this particular short form uh, are not applicable to a virtual event, such as the supply list on the right, uh, which would be used for an in-person event. Um, but the majority of this is still applicable. So remember, a successful Kaizen event will begin with a clear description 
of what you're trying to accomplish and measurable goals and objectives. Ensure that you identify and meet with your event sponsor and champions to request the necessary support and the resources for the event, right? Very similar to an in-person event. A uh, question came in from Tom around uh, eight hours at a time. Uh, we are actually going to hit on this particular question, Tom, in just a minute. So give me just a few minutes and we'll talk about that. Uh, all right, let's go to the next slide here. Uh, with any Kaizen event, there are three common pitfalls that you want to be careful of, especially with virtual events. So first, uh, undefined or unclear goals, which I mentioned, you know, this short form can definitely help you with that. The second one is having the wrong people on the team or people missing from the team. And then the third would be jumping to solutions too quickly. So proper pre-planning can definitely help you eliminate some of these concerns. Uh, one of the tools that I use that helps me identify team members is a SIPOC, which you see here on the right. Uh, for those of you that don't know, a SIPOC is a supplier inputs, process outputs, and customer. And by laying out a rough process map ahead of time, and you know, again, maybe you're doing this with your team. Uh, as a facilitator, you're gonna wanna include your team in some of these uh, pre-planned uh, activities, obviously to generate that uh, excitement for coming up to the event. Uh, and this is one way that you can do that is through the SIPOC activity. Uh, but the, the SIPOC is gonna help you to know who all of the suppliers and custom customers are of the process that you're looking at, at working on for this Kaizen event. And then those particular suppliers and customers are the ones that will you know, be chosen for your team. And then there's some other things that you can do to make sure that you've chosen the right team. Uh, but once the team is identified overall, all pre-event notes should be sent out to the team to review prior to the first day, right? Offer opportunities for team members to ask questions, uh, pr preferably in an open discussion uh, where the rest of the team is involved, like you know, WhatsApp or SharePoint, Stormboard, Microsoft Teams, those types of things can definitely help. Um, and we'll discuss a few of those here in just a few minutes. Uh, but like in-person events, all virtual events need to be broken up with some interactive activities, all right? So I wanna look at some of those next. Oops, let's go back. All right, interactive icebreakers, fun interactive icebreakers. Now, again, some of these are very similar to what you could be doing in person. Um, but as I said, interactive activities help to break things up and keep the team engaged. So the first activity that I wanna share with you is one of my favorites. It's called Creative Costumes. I know it sounds kind of funny, uh, but this activity is just plain fun. Um, even as adults, it's plain fun. Uh, you're gonna get your entire team laughing hysterically. You're gonna build some camaraderie. The, the only challenge here for the facilitator is to reel it in, right? This is, a, uh, this is an area where the facilitator really needs to step up and okay, time to take off the, the wigs and the masks and let's, let's really dive in here. Um, but you could schedule this first thing in the morning uh, or you could challenge everyone on a break to come back with a silly hat, wig or costume. Um, consider voting for a best costume giveaway prizes. Um, so those, that's one activity. The second activity is uh, to simply create a team name. We usually do this with all of our in-person events as well. Obviously you can still do this with a virtual event, but it's important because a team name creates an identity, right? It creates pride in what you're doing. Um, this is something that can be done on day one as an icebreaker activity, or once you've identified your team members, you could you know, start this activity earlier on in your pre-planning, which would then allow you time to potentially order t-shirts, have them shipped to everybody, and maybe have everybody wearing their t-shirts for the final report out on, on day five or, or whatever it might be. Um, or if you want to get really creative, you could also, uh, after you've chosen a team name, you could have everyone make their own shirts and wear those one day. Um, and then give a prize out to whoever's, you know, maybe the most creative, right? Um, as the facilitator, though, I would suggest putting the team name on everything uh, as you go through the week. And again, this will just help to create that team identity and that camaraderie, uh, you know, among the team members. Uh, the next activity is called how, uh, how are you or how are you today? Uh, there are many different ways to approach this activity, but one way is to have a pre-made slide in your presentation um, and then ask everyone to find their annotate button. Okay, now unfortunately, because we're in a Zoom webinar, we're, we're not in the, the Zoom meeting uh, area, your annotate meeting doesn't work for all of you that are participants out there. 
So you have to be sure that when you schedule a Kaizen event, a virtual Kaizen event in Zoom, you want to use meetings, not webinars, okay? So then everybody can use all of the, the tools that are available in Zoom meetings. However, I have invited some of my amazing team members to join me as panelists. I have uh, Craig and, and Danielle on to help show you a little bit about how this works. So I usually uh, include instructions like you see here on how to make the, it as simple as possible for the team, right? And I ask them to read and follow along as I explain the instructions, right? First, find your annotate button. Then find your stamp. Use your star, uh, your star stamp to go ahead and place it on, you know, an, an area where, you know, this is how, how are you feeling today? Now, this is the nice thing about this is that it's an anonymous activity. So I have no idea who's placing stamps where. Um, but this does generate uh, an, an opportunity for us to have some really great discussion and develop some trust among the team, right? That's something that team members are going to need as we go forward in order for them to open up and start sharing about maybe some of the things that are happening in their particular area um, of the Kaizen event and their, their process that they work in. Um, so we want team members to feel comfortable, to be open and honest, and to hopefully, uh, hopefully that will roll over into the event activities later on. All right, so that's one. Uh, let's go to another activity. This is another really, actually, let me clear some of those stamps here. Uh, I'm going to clear all of them. All right, let's start again. And uh, this is a really good activity for those of you that have maybe external suppliers or vendors or even team members who are in different locations around the world. Uh, team members will build some camaraderie as they see others with similar interests, right, and travel locations around the world. Um, the cool thing about this one is that you, could, you don't just have to use a map of the world. You could also put a picture of maybe like a bunch of, uh, I don't know, alcoholic beverages and ask, or, or soda, you know, whatever, ask everyone to place a stamp on their favorite drink, right? Or maybe it's their favorite type of animal or their favorite time of year. Uh, whatever. Again, this, is, this will generate some fun discussion among the team and get them out of their shell. And these are all characteristics that are necessary for a successful virtual Kaizen event, right? Um, so just keep that in mind as we continue to move forward. All right, with that, I'm going to, I'm going to remove the, the drawings here. And all right, perfect. Okay, let's go to the next slide here. All right, just two more uh, interactive activities I want to talk about before we get into the agenda, the, the virtual Kaizen event agenda. Uh, this last activity, these last two activities, uh, second to last, is called Two Truths and a Lie. Again, this is one that I do uh, in an in-person Kaizen event. I would do it for a virtual Kaizen event, right? In this activity, each person must say two things that are true about themselves and then one thing that is a lie. And then the rest of the group has to try and guess which statements are true and which ones are a lie. So then we'll, that's, that's another great activity. And again, there's a ton of stuff out on the web that you can find for other fun and interactive activities, ways to break up your, um, your virtual Kaizen events. And again, sitting at a computer for long periods of time, it, it gets tough. So you got to do some things like this in order to keep the team engaged. Uh, but another thing that we'll do is we'll sprinkle in lots of fun videos to lighten the mood, get people re-energized, especially after breaks. Um, but just just to be sure, you, you need to make sure that your Zoom settings allow everyone, excuse me, to hear your computer sound if you're going to play videos. So there is a setting in Zoom that you that you have to hit in order for that to happen. Um, when are uh, in an in person Kaizen when you're in your in person Kaizen training time, we personally always use the famous Toast video with Bruce Hamilton to introduce Lean and the Seven Ways. Um, and obviously, this is something that you can also do virtually, right, as long as you have purchased rights to the video and you can use that. Um, but I would definitely suggest using that um, with your team during your training, your Kaizen training time. All right, so now let's look at the event agenda. Uh, like an in-person Kaizen event, you can't expect people to sit on a virtual event for eight hours, right, staring at a computer screen. You have to, you have to be very intentional about introducing more than the normal activities, right? Some fun videos, use breakout rooms, especially uh, consider shortening the event time and then add in some, some added or additional breaks, okay? Um, so let's look at a normal five-day in-person Kaizen event with the agenda first. 
All right, so this, is a, this would be a normal five-day Kaizen event agenda. Again, you can find these out on the web. This is one that we use personally. But for an in-person uh, Kaizen event, the, um, the whole week is one big plan, do, check, act, where most of the planning is done up front with the pre-work. Uh, so the week focuses heavily on doing as much work as you can out at the Gemba, right? So for those of you who may not know the term Gemba, Gemba is the place where the value add work is being done or where your Kaizen event or your project is taking place. We always start an event with an executive or sponsor kickoff. We want the team to hear um, support directly from an executive who will be giving them the necessary resources to be successful. So we invite that executive and any project champions to come back at the end of each day to get daily, daily, a daily summary of the activities and progress you know, thus far. And then we obviously have a final report out at the end of the week as well. So obviously with our current global pandemic, maybe it, many of us have not been able to be at the Gemba or hold Kaizen events uh, like what I'm talking about here, or what I'm showing here in, the, uh, in our four walls, right? So what do we do? Do we just put continuous improvement on hold? I think we've already established the answer to this, right? Absolutely not. As lean practitioners and in the spirit of Kaizen, we look for ways to improve and adapt, right? And as I said before, it's not ideal to do a virtual Kaizen event, but sometimes it is necessary. So uh, here's what I would use for a virtual Kaizen event. Now, spoiler alert here, the details behind the two agendas are exactly the same, okay? A Kaizen event is a Kaizen event. However, with a virtual Kaizen event, there will be some obvious differences, but overall, we wanna keep it as close to the same as possible. With a virtual event, there's gonna be much more pre-work and preparation needed by the team and by the facilitator. Rather than a full eight hours, like the question that came in earlier, rather than the full eight hours, you, you're going to want to uh, mix, shorten it up to about three to four hours a day in front of the webcam, if that, um, and then mix in some either some breakout stuff or some individual work outside of the web conference um, to get some of those activities done that need to be done for the Kaizen event. In order to stay on task and complete the week's activities, the facilitator needs to keep that team on track, you know, even though you're doing, this, you're doing things a little bit differently. But I would suggest a five to 10 minute break every one to one and a half hours when you are on the web conference. Um, be sure that each team member steps away from their computer and lets their brains and their eyes rest, right? Um, so I would still schedule an executive kickoff. I would still schedule a final report out. As I mentioned, I would also still use the Toast video uh, to introduce the seven wastes. I also incorporate the use of other software tools, videos, and activities, which I'm gonna review here in just a second. Uh, but these are mixed in to help move the team toward their goal. Um, and after day two, when problems are identified, sometimes we'll even break for a, a few hours or even a few days, a week, and then restart again because you do need that extra time in between to be able to uh, finish some of the, the tasks and activities that you would normally be able to do if you were in person together, but now you, you need a little bit more time to, to separate that out. Um, other times when possible and using some of the software tools that I'll show you next, we conduct root cause analysis as part of the event. And then later in the week after the team has identified problems, the root cause and solutions, uh, we tend to use much more breakouts in smaller groups and breaking up the activities like creating, like if you're creating standard work or simulating improved processes, right? You wouldn't do that as a group on a, on a Zoom. You would break out and you would do that separately and then come back to the team and report back. But here lies the dilemma, right? If we're on a web conference, we can't possibly go to the Gemba or the place where the project is at, or can we? Uh, so talking to and engaging with operators or process team members who are not necessarily on the Kaizen team is going to be very important for the success of a Kaizen event. So how do we, how do, we do it? Well, one way is to actually use your cell phone, right? Um, FaceTime can be, used, can, can be super powerful for operator interviews. Um, team members who are on site where the project or the event is taking place can bring the rest of the team to the Gemba by way of their cell phone or a tablet. And the rest of the team can view and ask questions using technology, right? So another tactic would be to schedule operators or process team members to log on to your web conference to conduct an interview with the team or maybe just a few of the Kaizen team members who are off site. And if you can't access for live view uh, and discussions on site, then consider getting some video. To be totally honest, probably for a lot of you, for in-person events, we use 
a ton of video to uh, of operators of process flow and then we use the videos to get accurate times rewatch seek out waste right so if you're doing that in an in-person kaizen event why wouldn't you just do it for a virtual kaizen event as well hopefully that makes sense to everybody um, as i mentioned we would normally record operators uh, machines or product flow for in-person kaizen events so why wouldn't we do the same for a virtual event if you're running an event on a machine or a process where some people are on site but others cannot due to non-essential or you know being in a different location or whatever it might be be sure that someone is on site who has access to an iPad or an iPhone record as part of the pre-work uh, record um, and then obviously during your you know current state analysis or when the team is experimenting with improvements just keep that phone out there and record and continue to share that with the team and I'm going to show you how we do that here in just a minute without having to uh, download all these videos and and um, try to email those because that can become difficult as well um, so you know we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll show you an example of that here in just a minute but you can screen share directly from your iPad to your team on the zoom um, and once it's set up you just simply open the video and play it on your cell phone or your iPad you can hit pause you can discuss you can even uh, allow the team to annotate to you know circle certain areas of the video um, and then again just um, be able to use that directly off your iPad or your iPhone and I'm going to show you an example of that here in just a minute all right so now it's time to dive into some uh, of the examples of you know software applications that can assist you in a successful virtual Kaizen event so there are many of these tools out there um, so many so, so my suggestion I guess because of the many different virtual tools that are out there is that you find what works for you all right find what works for your team I'm going to show you a few of these that we use um, and a few that I've seen other lean practitioners using um, but you have to figure out what's going to work for you and your team a lot of companies out there have many different tools uh, that they're using and so if you have a ton of platforms and apps and software that are already in use um, and now you know what you go to your team and you're telling them to learn and use some of these other platforms you just have to be careful about introducing you know a new program or a new platform um, because it can become confusing uh, you know as an organization so from a from a standard standpoint what are you going to use for your virtual Kaizen events um, all right, so uh, your team, your team. Once you've determined which uh, of the tools is going to fit for your particular team, then your team needs to become comfortable in using those and navigating between those platforms and, and you know incorporating them with your current programs that you use. Um, so you know, invest in the in the resources now. And in preparation for you know the future of virtual Kaizen events because I don't I'm telling you I don't think this is going away it's only going to continue to grow and so invest in the resources now get your teams brought up to speed on some of the resources that are out there um, and help them to start learning and using them as you go all right so uh, whatever tool that you decide to use for your virtual Kaizen event make sure that you've shared that with the entire team make sure that everyone can view changes make sure that everyone can contribute um, you will need to establish clear expectations for who's responsible for what and when right tasks needs to be need to be completed but some of these tools can be used alone while other uh, tools can be used for you know uh, to be incorporated with the full Kaizen experience right so um, I see a few people in the chat box are talking about how they've tried a few of these. That's exactly my, my recommendation. If you haven't used any of these, I would recommend going out and just testing them, using them, and see what works for you and for your team. Um, here's an example of a process map that was created in Creatively, which can be up, then uploaded to your Stormboard, um, or you know details from your storm board could also be used to fill in your process map right so you can use these interchangeably or together the same thing with Google Docs I'm going to show you an example of that but you can create a process map in create Creately, and you can uh, you can export that and bring it into a Google Doc all of these are shared um, shared systems that your team can all have access to and continue to um, contribute you know to throughout the Kaizen event and throughout the week 
Um, Stormboard also has the capability to create some customized templates to conduct some structured problem solving activities. Um, however, just remember what I said earlier, right? As the facilitator, it's your job to have all of this set up ahead of time. So the more that you're introducing to the team, you just need to make sure that the team understands it, can use it. If you're creating some, some custom templates, you need to make sure that those are created ahead of time. You don't want to be creating templates and slow the team down because you weren't prepared, right? So if you plan on using you know, uh, an impact effort matrix or a cause and effect diagram or whatever it is, just be sure that the team has access to that and that the, the templates are already created. Um, you want to always be in step with your team as a facilitator and not fall behind or not slow the team down as they're continuing to work uh, forward in that way. I see a few people are dropping some other tools into the chat box. Uh, very much appreciated. Be sure that you uh, tag all panelists and all attendees as you're, as you're throwing tools into the chat box. Those are just going to be helpful and value add for everybody. I love someone through, looks like Tarun added uh, Jamboard is another one. We don't mention that one here, but that's another really great tool. Um, so just be sure that you, uh, you know, help each other out, drop those in the chat box, and, and we, can, we can definitely chat about those as well. All right. Um, here's another great example. This is from my friend uh, Chad Burroughs. Chad spent 12 year, years working in Japanese automotive and then seven years as a business improvement manager for Rolls-Royce Aerospace. Uh, if you know Chad, you know that he has a, a, a YouTube channel out there for virtual Kaizen coach, right? So he's currently the senior Danaher business system leader for Chemtreat. But Chad is, is known on YouTube as the virtual Kaizen coach. So I, I figured I saw it fit to grab an example from his tool chest that we could use on this particular webinar. Um, many of us are familiar with and use affinity grouping and voting with in-person Kaizen event. Um, Chad actually shares a creative way to do this during a virtual Kaizen event using Microsoft Teams. So this can also be done directly in Zoom uh, or on, on the whiteboard chat, so you don't have to necessarily use uh, Microsoft Teams. You can, you can do this in other applications as well. Uh, but begin by collecting the ideas using electronic sticky notes, um, and which Microsoft Teams does have. You can also go out, Google has an electronic sticky note application. But use Affinity to organize them and then enter the sticky notes into the chat function. And then Chad gives us a few rules for virtual voting. Um, one of them is to wait until all notes have been, have been typed into the chat before voting. Um, and then the other one is that he only allows four votes per person. So once he puts those in there, um, then he has everybody vote at the same time. That way there's, there's no one that is uh, being uh, moved in one direction or the other based on someone else's vote, right? Um, so the silent voting with emojis uh, is how he does it, and he does that directly into the chat window. Um, he uses Excel to input the results into an impact effort matrix, but you can also place them directly into a shared Google document or a storm board or whatever it is that you might be using. So, Chad, thank you so much for your great example. All right, here's a few other virtual tools in action. Um, Trello can be used as a task management or a Kaizen project management board, while Miro offers some real-time mapping uh, management, visual data tracking opportunities. I love to use WhatsApp with Kaizen Teams because it's a simple app that they can put on their phone um, and then everyone gets the same information, right? You can, you can ask questions, you can drop videos, pictures, documents, um, and then just have some really good discussion directly on the thread where it's shared out to everybody. And I actually, I believe that uh, Paul Akers from FastCap uses WhatsApp for his entire team as a best practice sharing application. So they record videos and then share them out to the team on some of their best practices. Um, the nice thing about it too is on the search menu for WhatsApp, you can actually go back and look at past documents or pictures and things like that um, without getting lost in the thread. So uh, those are just a few really great tools to incorporate into your next virtual Kaizen event. Again, I saw some other people through some really great ideas into the uh, chat box. Um, Iobias out there, uh, Jamboard. There's a couple different ones that I saw drop into the chat box. So thank you for sharing uh, some of those with the team. All right. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to transition and I wanna show you guys a quick example 
of uh, how we use Mentimeter, menti.com. So for those of you that are new to uh, Mentimeter, this is a really, really great website that is free to use. I'm actually using the free version to show you today, so I'm going to share that here in just a minute. And uh, it's, it's really simple to use. It's fun to use. What I want you to do, though, is I want you to pull out your cell phone, or you can open up another uh, web browser on your laptop, because I'm going to ask you to uh, be part of our voting today. So let me go ahead and switch my screen here. All right, here we go. So let's just, I want you to see this. Uh, hopefully everybody can see, is everybody looking at the uh, which ways can you identify uh, defects, overproduction, waiting? Uh, hopefully that's what everybody's seeing right now. Um, but that's what I'm looking at. Okay, perfect. Um, so this is Mentimeter. This is the back end. Again, this is the free version. So uh, you can only do two pages on this, which you can see here. Uh, there's lots of different uh, question types in here that you can use. Uh, you can do content slides and you can do popular question types here. Uh, and then obviously you create it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you from my cell phone, I'm going to show you a video that I just took this morning. And I'm going to want you to, uh, to take some time to be part of this little, uh, this, this group exercise together, okay? So what I want you to do is go on your cell phone. I want you to type in menti.com and then use the code 393953, okay? You can also do this in a web browser and open up a new web browser and you can do this on your laptop or your, your desktop as well. But go to menti.com, type in 393953. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a video, and then I want you to, as you watch the video, I want you to identify any wastes that you see. If you see defects, I want you to type that into the, the menti.com as, as an answer. If you see overproduction, if you see inventory, if you see transportation, whatever it is that you see. Now, remember, um, I'm using my, I, my iPhone here. So if I was on site somewhere and I asked my team to, uh, to go record a machine or to go record some operators um, on their cell phone. The really nice thing is that they can be out on the production floor or they can be, uh, you know, in the office over you know, seeing, watching a process and, and videoing that with their iPhone. And then with like two clicks, they can share that to the team on Zoom. So let me show you how that works. Now that everybody's on Menti, let me show you. I'm actually going to do a new share. I'm going to share my iPhone I'll show you how this works. Give me just a second here. Takes just a minute to pop up. All right, now you are looking at my cell phone. So everybody sees my cell phone now. Um, again, just imagine that I was out on the production floor or out watching a process, observing a process, and I recorded a video with my camera on my iPhone, okay? So, so as I did that, I actually um, just open up my pictures. There we go. So here's the videos that I recorded earlier today. These are on my cell phone right in my video area. So I'm going to play this for you. One thing that I got to be sure that I do is share the audio with you. Whoops, let me do that again. I got to be sure that I share my computer audio with you. So that you can hear the audio from my cell phone. So give me, give me one second again here. Again, it's two clicks and you're right into your cell phone and you're looking at my videos. Uh, I just want to make sure that you can hear the audio here. All right, here we go. All right, I'm gonna make myself a pot of coffee. Pay attention, this is the process. All right, first of all, I gotta fill up the water. Making myself a cup of coffee. Now remember, any waste that you see, go Usually ahead and put fill that it in up about and hit submit. To there, about halfway. Add the water in here. All right, 
Now I need to get myself a filter and the coffee. Okay, filter and coffee. Drop the filter in there. I usually do two scoops. Depending on how I'm feeling, I might put in a third. Usually two scoops. Put that down. Hit brew. All right, now it is brewing. Put this back. All right, now we wait. Let's see here. Grab myself. All right, play the second video here. You should be entering any- Sometimes I pop open my LinkedIn. Any uh, waste that you see, you should be entering that into Mentimeter and submitting it. Look at Facebook, grab some breakfast, whatever. Um, but we are brewing. Coffee maker uh, tends to start up pretty quickly. The nice thing about this coffee maker is I only have to wait long enough until I have my cup ready in there and then I can pull it out and it'll keep brewing. I can fill my cup. However, at that point, the coffee, the coffee is a little bit stronger. Um, the, so sometimes I don't like my coffee that strong. So I'll wait until the entire um, half a pot is done brewing and then I'll pour my cup of coffee. But that is a nice thing about these coffee makers are that I actually it has a stopper. So once I have approximately one cup of coffee, then I can, I can fill up. All right, so the final step is to actually clean out the coffee maker. Uh, otherwise, my wife won't be very happy if I leave that like that. But one of the things I want to show you is an issue that I've been having with this coffee maker. Look at what's at the bottom of my, my coffee here. That's terrible, isn't it? So we need to figure out what's going on with the coffee maker there. All right, so let's go back to Menti. And I'm going to hide this, and this should update. There we go. So you guys have taken some time to input some of the waste that you saw in watching the video, and now you're seeing the word cloud created based on all of the inputs that you guys put into the, uh, the Mentimeter. Now, this will continue to build as people add more and more answers to the, the Menti question. The nice thing about this is that the more people that add, like if you add waiting two, three times, four times more than other items, then it becomes larger, the word becomes larger than the other ones. So defects, waiting, motion, and transportation are some of the larger wastes that have been identified when you're watching this video. Um, and you can see they're continuing to update. We have uh, 87 people have, have uh, put some type of an answer in here now, and, and we're looking at defects, waiting, and, and motion as being the larger items for, uh, for waste that you guys identified uh, in that particular uh, video. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to, you, you can refresh your screen and you should see this question now. If you don't, you may have to go back to menti.com and enter the code again, but it should tell you that I've changed the slide and you can refresh your screen on your cell phone or on your, um, on your, uh, your laptop or desktop. This, here's another question that I want you to answer. So out of those wastes, which one should we go after first? Based on what you saw, now again, this is, this is a very high level. There's no data here, right? Um, this is just based on the team. I just want you to get some experience with these tools. Now, obviously, in, a, in an actual virtual Kaizen event, we might be gathering some actual uh, data to make some of these decisions. But I just want you to get a feel for how these tools work. Um, so this is another question for you based on the videos that you saw. Which of these wastes should we improve first? And this is, again, it's, it's voting from the team. Go ahead and put your answer into Menti, hit submit, and then this is going to build as you're answering that question. So we're watching. We have 30 people that have answered the question so far. Uh, it looks like the, the, the first waste that should be improved is too much walking or motion. Um, so that's vote, being voted on by the team right now. They're, they're deciding that too much walking 
motion is the largest waste or maybe the one that we should go after first. Once again, I would back this with data. If this was a real Kaizen event, we would be looking at time studies. We would be, we would be picking apart the video, doing analysis on this to make sure that the team has all the information that they need before we move forward. But this is just one example of a tool that you can use um, with your virtual Kaizen events. Okay, let me show you uh, another. Um, so this is a Google Doc. Again, I just threw this together. This is very bare bones right here, but this is a Google Doc that is shared. Um, again, it's free, right? And it's shared with my entire team. Um, and we actually created a, a process map in Creately uh, and then exported it and imported it into uh, this Google Doc with a couple clicks. Uh, this particular process map was actually created right in uh, Google Docs. So you can also create process maps right in Google Docs. Um, and then you could do something simple like putting together a Kaizen newspaper. Again, this is a shared document. Um, these are things that you can also do in Microsoft Teams and SharePoint, right? Uh, you know, but this is just one example uh, of a, a tool and how you could use that. Um, let's go back to Menti again. I want to present you with one more before we uh, close this particular uh, webinar. Uh, so if you could uh, clear, your, clear your screen on your phone or uh, open up a new browser, go back to menti.com and use the code 613905. menti.com, use the code 613905. What I want you to do is I want you to answer this question. It's an open uh, answer. You can type in whatever you want. Um, but I want to know what your thoughts are. Again, this is a very simple uh, example, but I want you to tell me what can we do to reduce the walking distance. So go to menti.com, use the code 613905. Let us know what can we do to reduce the walking distance. So you can see I got some answers coming in now. Uh, store coffee and filter close to coffee machine. Put all supplies closer together. Move supplies closer together. Uh, move the coffee maker. Co-locate materials. Uh, keep machines close to the coffee cabinet, move coffee maker closer to the sink. So here's some really great answers here. Um, I probably would take this and I would do some affinity clustering, right? And I would look at, okay, from my team standpoint, what are the largest clusters um, that we want to maybe look at first as far as uh, solutions, right? Where do we want to go first? And this is going to just scroll through as you guys are entering in ideas. Uh, the, those answers are going to scroll through and we're going to be able to see what everybody thinks we should do in order to reduce walking distance. Now, could I just ask the team on the Zoom, hey, what do you guys think? And let's talk about it. Sure, I could do that, right? But this is an activity that just breaks things up a little bit. It offers a different way, a different visual. Um, it just creates opportunity for the team to be engaged instead of just saying something or keeping their computer on mute, right? They're going to they're gonna do something like this and it's going to keep them engaged um, in the activity. So this is just one other way that you can uh, engage your team doing using a virtual Kaizen event, okay? Um, before I go to the last slide, uh, I want to go back to the questions and see if there was any questions in here before we close for the day in the chat that I didn't get to. Um, so let me open up the chat again. All right. Um, see some good suggestions around Mentimeter. Um, the question is, is the cloud shown in PowerPoint or is this a website interface? It is a website interface. Um, however, you can get the paid version, which would then allow you to create it in PowerPoint and embed it in PowerPoint. And you can go vice versa. You can create it in Menti or you can create it in PowerPoint. Um, so good question there. Any other questions pertaining to anything in uh, with virtual Kaizans? Anything that you uh, just were wondering about or had a, a question about, throw that in the chat box and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Um, if I don't get to your, your question or your answer, um, feel free to email me or reach out to us at office at patrickadams.com and um, we can uh, try to answer those questions to the best of our ability. Um, so with that said, let me share, let me go back to Menti real quick um, and we're going to go to the, the last slide here. Um, so as we close today's webinar, uh, hopefully you were able to gain some value from today. Even just one thing um, in this hour, this is a free webinar. Again, uh, all of the, the, the donations, 50% of the donations go back to uh, Lake Mich or, or, um, 
Michigan Lean Consortium. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, hopefully you were able to take away something from today. Um, if you did, go back to menti.com. Uh, you should see that it's forwarded to another slide. You can refresh that. Just throw one takeaway in the uh, in Menti for me. Let me know what's one thing that you took away from today, something that you didn't know, maybe an aha moment, maybe something that you're going to go out and, try, and test or try um, and start incorporating right away. So go ahead and take a moment and do that. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat box. If there are other questions that come in uh, while, we're, while we're here, I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. Um, but please take a moment, go back to your mentee, refresh it, and give me one takeaway from today's webinar. Um, so I appreciate that. That helps me out just to know uh, what, what are the, air, the tools that are most popular or what are the areas that maybe um, I didn't explain enough or things like that. So thank you very much for your time today. Um, I am going to stop the share. I'm going to open the chat box one more time. Uh, comment from somebody on don't, don't do eight hours on the computer. Agree 100%. Um, use icebreakers to introduce the tools. Very good. Um, so these are all these are all areas that you guys uh, saw as takeaways. Love the idea of filming a go and see, and then streaming it for re for review. Good, good, good. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, everybody, that is the top of the hour. It is two o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and close. Uh, thank you for. Uh, taking the time today to listen in. I hope, again, that you were able to walk away with at least one thing that you can begin implementing today, right? Don't spend an hour with us today and walk away with nothing. Take a moment to reflect and pick one area, one item that you can start implementing right away. Um, and again, let me know if you do have any questions or you need anything else. Uh, we do have another Kaizen event coming up with the Michigan Lean Consortium. It's going to be, uh, we're going to dive into virtual daily management, virtual daily management. So we're going to go maybe dive into some of those tools that we just hit on very briefly today. We're going to dive into those and look at ways that we can incorporate our daily management uh, virtually, right? So what tools are out there that can help us to do that? Um, so look for that. That's going to be coming out soon with the Michigan Lean Consortium. And then as always, we share lots of free value in our Lean Solutions community. It, um, you will receive an email at the end of this to, um, to join our, our free Lean Solutions community, um, and you can get lots of free videos and free support there. Um, so please uh, consider that as well. Thanks again, Mike, for, for coming on and, and introducing the Michigan Lean Consortium and uh, introducing this webinar. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to do that. With that said, everybody, that is the end of the webinar today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.